Hi everyone, welcome to another week of Oh Ship. Continuing this kind of recent trend that I've had of inviting my, my coolest but yet geekiest friends who happen to also be doing something with AR or VR. Uh, I'm gonna continue that trend this week, uh, having my friend Leila Mirsadegian. Leila is the Senior Program Manager at Microsoft's Mixed Reality or Old Space VR project. I've known her for a really long time, like a lot of the guests on this show. Uh, she's done some very, very cool things in her career. Uh, she was a co-founder of a company called One Dome. While not uh, a huge name, has done some really, really, really cool projects like something called uh, the uh, uh, Unreal Garden. And uh, it was a kind of like a, um, you know, alternate uh, augmented reality uh, and mixed uh, experience of which her company did a lot of those types of things. Uh, before that, she spent a healthy amount of time in the advertising world, which is uh, part of how I got to know her. Uh, she uh, has been a, a notable uh, leader in business development across three great uh, agencies with Trailer Park, Blitz Agency, who uh, their founder had actually also been on the ship, and even my old agency, iChameleon Group. Uh, but the reality is, long before all the cool business stuff that Layla and I uh, you know, have had, had a chance to interact with each other, we actually met on the back of a boat in 2002 in Miami, shortly before I did my first uh, run at Bur Burning Man in 2003, and I remember talking her ear off about Burning Man uh, and trying to learn everything I could about something I was actually pretty nervous and, and, and excited um, about going to. But you're going to get a chance to hear a lot about all those things and maybe a couple of stories I'm going to regret telling uh, on this week's episode <laughs> of O Ship. Layla, welcome to the show. Freddie, my friend, how are you? Thank you for having me. Uh, it's uh, good to see your face in person this time, because actually the last time uh, Layla and I hung out was last Friday, uh, where I did my first uh, first VR like social party. Basically, I went to like a like a like a Burning Man party in VR, which is ironic given uh, I think we've gone really really uh, full circle here. Uh, we're going to talk about that today, uh, but. I thought that would really set us up for a cool topic for today. And, uh, you know, obviously we're friends, uh, but, you know, I think about your background, you've been, you know, but even before all that stuff I mentioned earlier, you were throwing events and, and you know, in the music scene. So you like, you like, you're a very social animal. Let's leave it at that, right? You're a social <laughs> animal. You like bringing people together in the real world. And then all of a sudden, you know, now you're bringing all these people together in the virtual world. So I'm going to title today's show finding friends at the intersection of reality and virtual reality in honor of uh, getting to pick your brain uh, while some people watch. So, you know, I talked a little bit around your background uh, at the beginning of the show, uh, but I'd love it if you could give people a little bit more insight into your background and, and why you're a great, you know, insightful person to, to listen to today. Wow, thank you, Freddie. Clearly that envelope's working well. Um, <laughs> hi, everyone. So. Um, Freddie did a okay job introducing me, but I will do a better job here. No, uh, I'm kidding. So 20, I don't know, over 20 years across entertainment, technology, and event production. As Freddie mentioned, um, I, you know, I've done a lot in events. Actually, in the late 90s, I started in technology in, in the UK. Um, dot com bubble burst. Um, like many others, uh, the companies went under, and I ended up actually being asked to set up and run the largest licensed nightclub in London, which was a 30,000 square foot property. We did Ooh. corporate events during the week and uh, club nights during the weekend. So that was my first really learning on steroids almost of how to do everything from production to uh, operations to management to promotion. And um, and a few years into it, realized that too young, too early, need to get out of that business. And that's when uh, Freddie and I um, joined forces at iChameleon and have since uh, many years there, um, you know, really started in digital product and, and marketing um, with iChameleon, you know, moved over to Blitz, um, where I was able to go deeper on the product side, um, get into um, video games, in fact, launching Blitz's video game practice. 
um, and learned a I'm lot very about. I'm very cost- jealous of that. I want that on record. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, yes, please be jealous. No, it was super fun. I mean, Blitz was an amazing agency. I really, I mean, I Chameleon, of course, was I know, crazy okay. fun. Um, but you know, I learned a lot and was able to launch the video game practice, where it really, and it's relevant to this conversation, is understanding. You know, we built cross-platform. Um, um, extensions of games like Halo Reach and Gears of War and a number of other titles um, and really in order to bring community and keep community engaged um, on these IP drops that would take like two years. So how do you keep people engaged in the world um, between these drops and how do you get them to buy um, content along the way? Um, and that was really exciting. That was really interesting. And then what happened was social media really just broke all of that and um, disseminated the uh, the community side of things. Um, I left Blitz and went into the entertainment side with Trailer Park and continued that path until about five years ago when I really wanted to sort of take these three areas, entertainment tech and um, event production, into a business and thought, well, why isn't it possible to do all the things? And uh, manifested one dome, which I uh, became a co-founder and we launched um, we launched three experiences, the first of which was actually a first, a world first, which is called the Unreal Garden, a mixed reality experience, the first ever mixed reality experience that blended physical sound projections, haptics, and then augmented reality. So AR using the Microsoft HoloLens. My physics is bad. <laughs> um, and um, brought 40 people together to uh in a multiplayer type experience to be able to connect and be wowed and um and sort of um somewhat be inside a reality um even though you know they're sort of um interacting with the virtual world and the reason that we chose AR versus VR is at the time this was three years ago now three four years ago at the time you know, I really believed that eye contact was necessary. I still do. Eye contact is necessary for connection. And VR at the time didn't allow for that. Um, and uh, so that's why we chose AR and cut to um, a year ago and the pandemic and, you know, all of uh, the location-based entertainment and experiences that I was working on went away. Um, and I found myself, um, joining the BRC VR team, which is Burning Man. Um, well, so Burning Man went virtual for the first time last year. And um, and they had- uh, well, Born they, out of necessity, obviously. Through, entirely born in necessity. And they actually yeah. created, uh, the theme was multiverse and they invited eight companies to create uh, virtual versions of Burning Man that were very different. And we were the only one in VR, um, at least social VR. And, um, and that was my first real experience with Altspace VR. Um, and um, you can, yeah, so play the video here, um, the trailer of uh, BRC VR from last year. But one of the things you'll notice maybe here, I'm not sure how close we'll get to the eyes, but, but what Altspace has gotten right and what totally blew my mind and, cha- and, and made me realize that you can actually create a connection in VR is the eyes. Once you have the eyes right, once the eyes can move and the eyes kind of that connection is made, it, it changes everything. And um, so I ended up producing a number of events in Altspace and now I'm with Altspace, which is super exciting. So I got to join the Microsoft Mixed Reality team very recently and um, I'm working with Altspace. Uh, well, um, you can add uh, you can add getting to work in the VR AR space uh, right alongside getting to work in the gaming space. Two things that I haven't had a chance to go deep in professionally, and uh, I wish I did. So, uh, very very cool, Ella. You know, I do yeah. want to talk about this. Well, we got the footage up there. Um, you know, I mentioned in the in the you know kind of setup to this week's show that I had basically attended my first um, you know VR social gathering look and i've had um you know an hcc vibe for quite a few years now i'm uh, very comfortable and and familiar uh, with vr technologies but in full transparency and being and just being really honest about it i had never really done a social event in it and this is something that you've been you know been doing for a number of years um you know it it was at 10 p.m on a friday night of course i went and had a couple too many drinks with some other friends right beforehand uh, word to the wise, don't try and do new social VR experiences when you probably shouldn't be operating heavy machinery. But, you know, there I was uh, trying to experience this for the first time with you. Um, 
<laughs> and, and, and I'm going to say something, and I, and, and, and I don't mean it to come out in a weird way, but there, there is, there's a certain clunkiness, I think, about where, like, some of the social VR, you know, is right now, that it's not, you know, it's not as seamless as some of the other computing experience we've got, but it was still, and I want to be very clear about this, totally awesome. And it, it was, it was, um, you know, the, where I didn't kind of, exp you know, I wanted things maybe to be, oh, look, I'm a gamer, so I wanted that visual fidelity to be higher on some things, but the reality was um, the little things like you mentioned, the eye contact. So when you're this little VR, you're looking, you know, and you're and you're and you could hear, you know, the direction the audio is coming from the people around you. I think there was 170 people at this party when I, at least when I when I clocked out for the night. And as you move around the space, you can you know you can hear the spatial audio impacting you. Uh, but when I walked up to someone, obviously we can't really track their eyes. But the fact that Old Space was smart enough that it, it could tell when I was talking to another person and our eyes would lock and that really had a big impact on the experience. It was, it was, um, it was pretty profound actually. I, 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 I felt like I was doing something special and, and honestly for me, and I remember saying this to you right after we, you know, after I logged out was like, that was actually like a, like a memorable life moment for me because I actually think that 10 years from now when people are, you know, everyone is interacting with VR on some level and some people are going to laugh about that right now, but I totally believe that. Um, you know, then you're going to be like, I remember doing that 10 years ago. And remember how simple it was back then compared to like now it's like photo real, you know, 10 years ago, it's photorealistic avatars with, you know, eye tracking and face tracking and all that is the norm. Um, it's, it's, it's powerful. I mean, that's got to be exciting for you to be in that, in that, in, the, in living in that moment right now. It really is. I mean, I'm super grateful because I've, I've sort of found myself being presented with opportunities just at the right time as these things were happening. So I've, I've been able to innovate a lot and, and work with amazing people to do that. Um, you know, that you, you bring up the question of fidelity. So, so here's the thing, you know, where if you think about AR or VR, it's a mobile experience at the outset. So it's, you know, it's, it's keeping, um, <clears throat> for say file sizes and and content at a level that has the best performance. So there's part of the challenge that we currently have and face, right? Whether it's alt space, whether it's VR chat, whether it's rec room, either way, these these experiences are currently um, at at this level and and you know and Unity is the platform that's being used when it's not yet at a level where you can use an Unreal Engine. But I, I, I do think that the fidelity aside, I mean, I actually don't think the fidelity is bad. When some of these worlds, um, um, you know, it, it's they're still stunning, and the fidelity sort of goes away as you as you think about it. So and I, and I'm really clear. I, I, it's kind of like when I like I interact with like Minecraft the first time. You got to understand, like I play video games on a four, you know, 4K, you know, 4K, yeah. eight, you know, mega HD graphics, and and, and oh, it's I've seen like, your setup. Uh, I yeah, know. <laughs> it's, but but it was like it just none of that mattered. I guess was my point. Once I once I got into the experience and. You know, I always used to joke, like the first time I played Minecraft, I was like, I don't get it. Why would people do this? And I was like, I'll just try it. They were giving it away for free on Xbox. And I was like, I logged in and, and it was, I'm kind of half joking. I said, quite literally 13 hours later, I stopped playing, you know, and it was like, it just, it was, you know, it was, it was, it was bigger. It hit me, you know, and I think there's a similar thing here. You know, I said something to you right after that experience. I said, this kind of reminds me a little bit of like a like 90s internet there's some not everything perfect about it but there's something really magical in knowing that you're like at a, a place in time um that is going to have a really profound impact on the future was that unfair of me to say that or, or do you or do you think that or, or do you no, think that's I, a, I would, not, not on i would actually liken it to 2004 internet okay. Um, okay if you think about the internet was becoming a prevalent platform for advertising marketing people were paying attention to it and they're like we want to be here i mean we worked on a number of ridiculous mm -hmm. experiences and microsites that you know mm -hmm. <laughs> really um were beautiful and super cool experiences but i'm not sure they really um you know at the end of the day um could because of the technology and where we were mm -hmm. as a you know um achieve what we can now um i look at it like that ar and vr especially vr um, is is a platform that everyone on the enterprise side, I mean, it's been exponentially growing the last few years, and I'd say the pandemic, you know, kicked up AR and VR um, mm -hmm. significantly. And if you think about all those employees being sent VR headsets um, to their homes uh, for a remote collaboration or whatever purpose the company was doing, they become consumers. Um, so we're there, we're there right now where, where people understand that it's another platform they need to have a presence on. Now, 
this doesn't mean you replace an existing real world um, experience. So for me, virtual events um, are here to stay. Mm -hmm. um, we will see a hybrid model moving forward. Um, certain experiences and events can be recreated in VR, like Burning Man, because of the scale of Burning Man. Mm -hmm. You know, VR has the boundaries. You can you can actually drop in the art that, um, you know, at the scale that it actually was meant to be created on the uh, mm -hmm. on the play itself. So you're experiencing this, and it's something that tripped me out because I, I actually was, it just blew my mind, especially when I started bringing friends into it and, mm -hmm. you know, starting to get people to buy headsets. And, you know, during Burn Week, I, you know, probably had about 12, 15 friends that we would communicate and be like, okay, let's meet. Let's meet at this location and let's run around. And you'd run around the play like like you would at the real event. Um, the difference is, and the cool part of this is, you can also fly. And that's not something that you can, well, you can fly over the <laughs> Burning Man, you know, but but you can't just fly around. Here about Burning Man. I'm going to leave that one alone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I will say that, uh, you know, you're not coughing up sand for a week. So that's, you know, that's about Oh, there's so much. There's so much plus side. But, <laughs> but, I mean, the most important thing to the virtual experience isn't, again, to replace it. It's about accessibility and access. Okay. So now millions of more people around the world can go to a Burning Man that they never would. And, and a lot of people, even if they could, they probably wouldn't because, you know, the stories that people assume, it's, you know, yeah. dirty and dusty and what do you mean I'm stuck there and what? And, you know, all these things, it's it's really not all of that, by the way, guys. What's also on an upside, you know, your avatars always have all your clothes on. People are worried about all the naked people burning. Right? You could actually be naked in real life, but then wearing clothes in your avatar and it's a win-win for everybody, basically. Just Sure. Also an option, yeah. I'm going to just leave it. Leave. You, leave it yes, but, okay. <laughs> so, I just joined I a, a respectable company that I need to yeah, watch yeah. out what I say on the internet now. <laughs> so that's all good. That's what I'm for. So, so um, <laughs> you know, you know uh, all, all jokes aside, um, you know, w when you see, you, you touched earlier about um, how, you know, the, these devices got in a lot of people's hands over the last, you know, year in particular for all the reasons we're not going to even mention anymore on the show. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you, you've you seen a Microsoft came out with Mesh in the middle of all that. And, you know, that was, I, for those of you who haven't kind of seen the, the teaser video of it, I mean, it's pretty, pretty world changing stuff. Um, that's using, you know, their kind of HoloLens tech um, I know not directly within in your world, uh, but I'd love to get. Uh, but I think there's like crossover. I'd love to kind of get your your take on it or, or your reactions or anything you're allowed to you're allowed to talk about there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, so Microsoft's announcement of Mesh and what they ended up showing um, in this uh, in in their keynote a few weeks back um, yeah. was the future in my opinion and you know and it's that's why it's super exciting to be part of the team there because of the technologies that they have everything from volumetric um capture stages that microsoft has so the ability to bring people in to a vr experience as holograms in 3d as well as um you know easily be able to bring people into as a 2d hologram mm -hmm. um which I think we have an example um, video of um, that we're going to see. Two in videos. Moment. Let's see how uh, <laughs> we think up. Um, <laughs> uh, this, yeah, there you go. So in this example, this is a little bit of um, a snippet from the Ignite keynote. In this example here, this is you know this is basically you have Alex Kipman on the left and James Cameron on the right speaking to each other, both as holograms in a, the same virtual space speaking to each other through um, uh, via sort of the the capture. So the 2D, the, they see each other through the HoloLens and they see anyone in VR through the HoloLens, mm. um, but they're able to actually be their real life presence. And I think that's another thing that Altspace, um, not to plug Altspace all the way, but um, I, I, I you know, one of the reasons they, I came in, yeah, it's the another audience. thing that they've, they've gotten right is the, is the presence, the sense of presence, and that's key. That's key to any virtual events platform. Fidelity can, you know, you can have the nicest looking um, environment and, you know, functioning and operating at the highest fidelity. But if you're missing the lack of presence, if you're missing the lack of connection, then it's really just, uh, you know, for me, it's just, it's, it misses the point of, mm -hmm. of the, um, of the whole purpose of this. And um, 
so yeah, I feel like um, I feel like that's that's some of the things that's really exciting. One of the other things I thought was pretty cool that we were able to demo a second of you ago for those of you that missed it was um, some of the newest Microsoft technology where if you in front of any Windows 10 computer now, if you do this, cue the videos, it will just start playing uh, whatever, like whatever video you're thinking about. Uh, it's pretty incredible. Um, so I use that on the show now all the time. Let's see if we'll cue the videos. Yeah. Um, so okay. So yeah, I, I, got it. I will do that. I will do that. In That was a great example of the O Ship Show in motion. I didn't actually mean to play that video then, but that's what I get for doing and don't do it this time. So we don't do that anymore <laughs> on the show. But that was really cool because we got to see the Unreal Garden full screen. Uh, so I mean, <laughs> can we talk about that for a minute? Not the wait, opera, wait. not the sh but you know, but like no, the no, no. thing that happened. We don't want to cue it up again by accident. We absolutely can. Well, so. <laughs> I think I need to mention something here because I think it's relevant before we look at the Unreal Garden, which is I am, you know, the whole reason I got into this is to bring people together, you know, and I've been doing that, like you said, thank you for, for years. But, um, and, and, you know, when we launched the Unreal Garden, I felt, you know, we got into a place where we got stuck behind our screens. We need to get out the bloody house. And that was, um, sorry, I don't know if I should tell you that, but um, that was, um, that was part of the reason of getting people out and connecting and experience. Now, um, you can also create that same level of social connection, right? In VR. <laughs> and Q Darwin. <laughs> oh boy. So, so on a quick shout out, by the way, just have to kind of acknowledge a comment while you got your oh ship dog moment there. Uh, I saw a nice message from Carol uh, popping. Carol and I had a chance to work uh, together when I was in Shanghai on Dove and we actually were doing some um, uh, AR mobile work in, in 2010 together. And she said, Freddie, how far AR has come since our Dove days. And and yeah, that pretty much, that that nails it. It's come a, lo a long way. Really, that it makes me, thanks for the reminder, Carol, because that really was some really early, early days uh, pioneering work that we were doing. Yeah, Carol, my dog also agrees with that. So that's, <laughs> what, that's what the barking was all about. He likes your comments. Um, it has come a long way for sure. So the Unreal Garden was um, is still my baby. We're bringing it back out. It's uh, relaunching 2.0 um, this summer in San Francisco, and then there's a number of cities that have uh, that are locked down for it to go uh, on tour. So fingers crossed. But um, you know, it was it was about how do you you know to keep people. So in VR, you're taken out of your reality effectively. So, but inside of AR because it augments your existing environment, because you can have plants and you can have, you know, the physical, and then you see the people around you, you're grounded in reality. So the content that's created can be incredibly powerful and impactful. In this instance, it's very entertainment driven, but you can use entertainment as a means to um, inspire and impact, bring people in sugar-coated vegetables. I think I learned that from Ken Martin 20, I don't know how many years ago, but I still say it. So use entertainment as bring, means to bring people in. The most powerful thing about AR and VR is its visceral nature. Mm. That allows you to create empathy and compassion. It allows you to, to instantly walk away with knowledge whether you've realized it or not. So for me, it's sort of the plant medicine of the masses. It's how do we, how do we, we've got a problem with the world right now, right? We've got many problems. But one of the biggest problems is climate. We're, we're sort of, you know, 
veering towards this cliff really fast. And people just don't get it and think changes aren't happening fast enough. So mm -hmm. this is, you know, my hope is like, let's get, let's use these technologies, not just to bring people together, not just to create connection and shared moments and surprise and delight, but also to have an influence and an impact. So when you, when you, you know, you said you're coming out with kind of uh, part two of this experience uh, in, the, in the semi near future, could you share what you think, uh, looking back on the, the first time you did this, not so much from a business standpoint, but mm -hmm. more about creating experiences for people, you know, maybe the biggest things you've learned or the biggest things you do differently this, this second time around? Yeah, don't design for yourself. Um, so we shouldn't be the audience. That's the biggest lesson I've learned over and over again in the last few years is like, you know, because, because we look at an experience and might think it lame, 95% of the population don't. And because we're introducing new technologies, whether it's projection mapping or, um, or, um, you know, um, AR or VR, um, that's the first thing you have to remember. You're bringing people, you're introducing them to a new tech. So if you're going to do that, don't also try and get them to do a bunch of things in that first experience. So mm -hmm. moving interactivity is a big mm -hmm. part of it. So not having every aspect of it be interactive, but you know, more, more discovery, more sort of, um, yeah, an explore and discovery kind of uh, experience um, mm -hmm. that also has these, these elements of interactivity uh, that leave people feeling good about it. Um, so that's probably one of the biggest. Uh, I, I, I'm intrigued, Leila. What 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 what's what's lame to you, uh, and and would be cool. No, to I'm not putting people. that on camera. It's other people. So <laughs> not, I will not tell you which Everyone's experiences, like, which very Leila popular like experience that. right now that's been going around the world that is absolutely in every city projection map art experience that could yeah. do more than. It could gotcha. be a little bit okay. more, well, and I, I, you know, and it's still even that it could be a little bit more. I, won't, I know, I, won't I know what you're talking about. Though. Yeah, like I know you do, and so does everyone else. Time. And by the way, no disrespect to the producers, but seriously, yeah. like it, but when, you, when you, but when you, when you, when you <laughs> immerse yourself in something, I think what feels like a cliche to someone that maybe does it every day, and if you've never seen it, you're like, you don't know, it's a cliche that you know it's something's yeah. been done to death. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I get what you're saying. Um, yeah. And so let, let's go back to the the social side of this. So, um, you know, when you think about, uh, you know, the way that people are almost getting rewired to interact with each other, the way that, you know, these kind of things like uh, Old Space VR or even other things that may, may be out there, you know, what, what would you say you, if you, again, not, you're not looking for a Microsoft point of view or, you know, a product roadmap or anything like that to be super clear, um, like, you know, what are some of your kind of gut feelings about some of the biggest things you might think are going to change over the next couple of years in social VR specifically, or even social VR slash AR? Put you on the spot a little bit. Good question. <laughs> um, well, I think I think one of the things is is accessibility. That means social VR can't just exist on a headset. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that you, it needs to be right now. You know, we have the desktop um, app applications for uh, alt space um but the goal is and i you know i mean at least you know i'm is to be able to be cross-platform i mean i think that's that that's the important thing for any platform um so that anyone can access and enter at um you know with with ease i think mm -hmm. is is the key I'm not trying to be you know, funny when I say this, but almost like Fortnite-esque in the sense that it's like you can play Fortnite on a mobile device, you can play Fortnite on every operating system, you can play Fortnite on every platform, you know, and that's why it has bazillions of users that it does. Except VR. Can you play it in VR? I agree. Good. Except <laughs> VR and AR, yeah, but but that's I'm sure that's coming. Um, you know, Epic's working on some cool stuff. So um, I, I'd say... Um, I think, you know, obviously fidelity, obviously bandwidth, you know, the capacity that a mobile phone or any any mobile based device can can manage. Um, so so all of that. Um, and then the probably, you know, where we've got the apples of the world and everyone else coming out with, you know, future uh, AR glasses that are going to be a bit more synonymous. I think I think you're just going to start to see the virtual and the real mesh. And um, there was an example in the, and we don't need to play it, so don't play it. <laughs> but there <laughs> is an example if you want to. <laughs> do not keep you. Do not uh, if you want to go to uh, <laughs> whoever's listening wants to. Um, man, this just feels like the old days, Freddie. I think we have an audience here. You got to stop behaving yourself. Um, <laughs> Sorry. 
So, um, uh, train of thought. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. So, so in uh, my goodness, um, in in if you look up, if you Google Microsoft Ignite keynote yeah. and go towards the end of it, you'll see an example where Microsoft has partnered with um, Guy La Liberté, who was the founder of Cirque du Soleil, with his new company called cool. Hanai World. And um, you know, and Hanai, I know that their vision is really integrating the live and the virtual. Mm -hmm. So you feel the two things. And with mesh, that becomes possible. And so that's really what's exciting for me is how to bring these worlds together in a really interesting way. That's not just suddenly I'm walking around and the virtual avatar is in front of me, like no reason, but it contextually, you know, things happen contextually. So, and 5G yeah. is also gonna change, I mean, changing the game in terms of content being able to deliver. So that's gonna change a lot of location-based experiences mm -hmm. in the process. Could, would you be able to share uh, your no. favorite, like, do you have a favorite or a defining kind of VR, AR moment for you? Like, so when you really think back about all these, all these years you've been doing this, you're like, that was a, that was a moment. Maybe it was just because it was with friends and it was the best, best moment ever. Or maybe it was because it was like profound in the sense that it, 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 it hit you. It was like, wow, this is, this is a change, a change, a sea change moment. Yeah, I mean, I think it was, well, I can, one moment that that stands out for me was um, when I had the concept of mixed reality. And I don't mean how mixed reality was being described in 2017, but, um, but really mixing realities. And I was sitting in a dome. There was random content playing inside the dome, so 360 content playing. There were a bunch of random props in front of me for no good reason. This just dome was a storage space. And I had a HoloLens on, and I'm not sure why at the time. Um, um, and um, and there was, you know, like a manta ray flying around in AR. And suddenly, you know, the vision that came for me is I suddenly saw the content on video the props and the AR suddenly blend in this really unique experience. And that's when I had the aha moment of that's mixed reality. That's how you mix realities. And that's how the vision of the Unreal Garden was born. That's awesome. I love that. I, sometimes I feel like somebody just kind of clicks for you and then you know, everything changes in that moment. I, I'm going to ask you something in a, in a moment uh, and I'm going to prep you in advance. It would not be oh ship if I didn't ask you about, have you ever had an oh ship moment in, 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 you know, kind of VR, you know, AR career. But while you have a think about that, there, we had a question from Enrico uh, on LinkedIn. He said, do you guys, or did you guys play Beat Saber, one of the most engaging and top play, played VR games uh, yet? And I will go on record as saying, hell yes, I played Beat Saber. Uh, it is the coolest I've ever felt in recent memory. And the only, as a guy who used to be a DJ and used to go to nightclubs, this is about the only way you're going to get me dancing like that now. And, and <laughs> it's like, and if you really want to feel like a complete idiot, play Beat Saber and then, you know, don't tell other people what you're doing. And then inevitably someone will come in and record you playing Beat Saber, but they can't hear the music. And all they That's see funny. you doing is like, yeah, yeah, but it's quiet. It's like the most awkward, you know those awkward <laughs> videos where like people are doing stuff and they kill all the like music video and they kill the music video and it's just making weird squeaking sounds when people sing. That's what it's like to record someone playing Beat Saber in a room by themselves. <laughs> it's awkward and horrible. But Beat Saber is awesome and totally worth that embarrassing moment. That is that is all. That is, that is, is that video That's online somewhere? It is not. Can and if my wife is watching right now, I would like for it to stay that way forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I'm, I'm sure we can find it. Um, yeah, and I look yeah. forward to putting it on. Um, yes, I have played Beat Saber. In fact, I played Beat Saber before. It was um, a, a well, Beat Saber uh, was Beat Saber. Major... There wasn't even beats when yeah, I played it. Or it was Saber. Like... <laughs> Listen, you know, you know, before, like, yeah, before there was, I don't even know what I was saying. The but, developers um, <laughs> comes in the version I played. <laughs> I got to demo it, and well before it was, um, you know, acquired by Facebook. But, um, but yeah, I mean, look, that's a great example of, well, first of all, Beat Saber is unique in a lot of ways, because it's fun. It's, it's like, I mean, Guitar Hero, remember that? Like, you're playing yeah, to the music, course. and listen. it's awesome. the same, it's the virtual reality version, I mean, again, 
that was amazing back in two thousand ten. I don't even like I don't even like dubstep, but after playing Beat, Beat Saber, <laughs> I'm like maybe maybe I like maybe I like dubstep for an hour. I'm good. I don't know. It's uh, it's, it's also by the way, if you actually look up. Um, the top fitness apps in VR. Beat Saber comes up the top one, two, or three, oh, and it's not even a fitness app. But people yeah, have lost human. weight on. Yeah, it gets you moving. Oh, it's yeah. fun, and it's also a social experience, and you can you can compete. And that's mm -hmm. the other thing. So right, it's not. I mean, look, gaming is has always been um, that social experience in a lot of ways, right? Like hardcore gamers, you know, coming together, playing together. Um, I mean, it's it's the same with AR VR. It, it enables that. I mean, we don't have to. I would like to see more content, especially in the location-based VR space. Um, less shooters and zombie killers, and more, you know, other things that are we're just not always killing. I mean, is there really um, enough zombie games out there? Do you think maybe one more just for fun? <laughs> you know, a little bit yeah. more. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Meaningful experiences. I mean. I loved so um, the Avengers, the Void. I love a lot of the yeah. zero latency VR stuff, but yeah. I, I gotta, I gotta try a couple more of those. But okay, ser serious question time. You know, like I said, it would not be a ship if I didn't ask you if you had, a, you know, an O ship moment that you're willing to share um, on the show. Um, you know, whether that's uh, an event gone wrong or, yeah. or you know, how you handled that, or just a any anything of just kind of like, well, that was not. Not the outcome we were expecting, um, but I love hearing, you know, if you've committed, managed to turn those into moments of triumph, those are great too, but I'd, I'd, lo I'd love to hear if you, you got anything you can you can share. Oh my God, yeah, absolutely happy to. Um, <laughs> let's, list, wait, let's, let's talk about, like, if you're gonna launch, you know, new tech, make sure it's ready for consumers because nope, the HoloLens was not made for the consumer market. We knew this and we did a ton of, ton of focus group. <laughs> well, you know, actually, to be frank, I want we wanted to be first to market. So you know yeah. you've got to sort of take those risks. Um, the yeah, I mean we did a lot of testing beforehand. We brought groups of fifty people in. No, no, that doesn't help. You know, once you have hundreds of people, yeah, did, didn't you have um, like people going around the, the corner for the line? For we this had thing literally lines. We were sold out um, for a few months at the beginning. Yeah. Um, and we had, so 120,000 people probably in, in six months, of which 45,000, 50,000 experienced the Unreal Garden um, from a capacity. It was just smaller than the other experiences. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, it like all went wrong at the beginning. It just all went wrong. I mean, you know, devices were overheating, things were breaking. It wasn't charging when you thought it was charging. We had too many stuff. Then we had too little stuff. You know, we, onboarding people, we were giving these spiels. I was like telling people a history of, I don't know, the story I made up about the Unreal Garden, just to onboard them and realizing, hey, by the way, just, just nobody forget, nobody remembers your name, let alone what you just said 10 minutes later when they're going into the experience. They're like, wait, what did I need to do? So, you know, don't onboard, self-guided experiences, put a headset on, let people figure it out yeah. themselves. For the but, you know, we learned a lot. We had a lot of very upset customers because yeah. people ended up having to wait because things backed up. And yeah. um, and it was unfortunate because then you can't get that social viral, you know, yeah. uplift or, or, of happy. Or, or people, it's hard, you know, when you want someone to experience something amazing, when they're kind of, it's like being hangry, you know, you, when you go into, yeah. the, when you go into the, the moment, a little hangry or angry or whatever you want to call it. Like it's hard to have fun when you're like, I'm still kind of pissed off. This is cool, but yeah. I'm still a little angry right now, <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> um, or, or when, you know, you realize you haven't properly communicated when somebody goes, that was the worst VR experience ever. And I'm like, well, yeah, that was not a VR experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> like, I still totally felt like I was in the room. You're like, were but you know <laughs> <laughs> i'd say that was probably the biggest like you know you can think you know everything but until you open the doors you don't and yeah. you know what there's no planning for that until mm -hmm. you battle test with hundreds of thousands of people eventually on something you're not going to know yeah so well, yeah. well i think that is an appropriate <laughs> and awesome way to end this week's episode of oh shit <laughs> Uh, that was great fun. And like I said, we had I think I was super fun. 
both of us had to keep reminding ourselves that other people were present for this. And, uh, you know, I, I, I intend to be with, when's the next, uh, Burning Man, uh, Old Space VR event? Every Friday night, we've got parties now leading up to, I think, uh, wait, BRC VR, sorry, not part of that team anymore, but BRC VR is doing weekly Friday night parties, I believe, for, for at least coming up because last week was the ply anniversary of BRC VR, but it was also the launch of this year's theme. And Burning Man this year is going to, well, as of right now, there'll be a small live event and then there'll be the virtual experience and then there might even be an integration but watch well, this I, I, I'm, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm planning possible. on showing up again this uh friday at 10 p.m i want to i want to give that another go maybe okay. I'll be more sober this time uh but if anyone else who's watching wants to give it a go and try it out maybe we'll get a chance to hang out and have a virtual drink together uh layla yeah, thank you yeah. so much for coming on the show i'm so proud of you and all your success and all the Thanks, fun things Ray. you've been experimenting you're doing doing awesome stuff and uh you know, for those of you watching, best thing you can do to support the show, give us a like, give us a share, and help spread the word about OSHIP. Thank you so much. Thanks, Freddie. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everyone.